Hi, design of column is a tricky topic for most engineers. In fact, there are quite a lot of parameters that are of significance. Today, I will reveal two important topics that are never understood or discussed by engineers. Hi all, this is Premjit here from Sibilara.com. As I told you, I will be covering two important points that are rarely discussed. In order to explain the first point, let me quickly tell you what it means by eccentricity moment. Why are we considering eccentricity moment? So if you look at this plan, assuming that this is a building and it has four columns on the corners and uh, let me name these as B1 and uh, B2 and let us consider one of the columns that is this particular column. Now, if you look at this particular column, it has B1 entering into it and B2 entering into it from two different directions. Now, at sight, due to various reasons, even though we believe that the center of the column and the center of the beam are likely to be the same, there is a possibility that due to site construction tolerances and uh, mistakes that do occur, this can go here or here slightly away from the column center in that particular direction. Now, please note B1 will create eccentricity either in this direction or in this direction not here or here so that's one point that you need to look into now when the other beam that is b2 enters into the column the eccentricity that is generated is in the different direction so if this particular beam is entering with a tolerance the eccentricity is going to be either here or here which means the eccentricity is going to be in this particular direction so now the point that i want to make is when you consider the eccentricity moment that is the load in the column multiplied by the eccentricity the minimum eccentricity whatever it is as per is 456 this has to be 20 millimeters or there is a formula i'm not going to explain you the formula for calculating the eccentricity moment in this video the eccentricity moment based on that formula or 20 millimeter whichever is lesser that is going to be the eccentricity the point to note is that this pu is not the total load in this particular column which is very much overlooked say for example this column has a total load of 1000 kilonewton in this calculation the point that you need to understand is that if you look at textbooks or sp16 what it does is it takes the 1000 load and then multiply with the eccentricity and then gives you the value for eccentricity moment in both direction it is going to be calculating the minimum eccentricity and giving you the result like this but the point to notice this thousand kilonewton is going to come from this beam as well as this beam so when you calculate the first eccentricity moment only the contribution of this particular beam needs to be taken into account say for example this beam is throwing say 600 kilonewton onto that particular column and this beam is throwing 400 into that column then these eccentricity moments are not really right this thousand is going to be 600 and the other thousand is going to be 400 now please note all this makes your manual design of columns even more complicated so this is an important point that you need to understand now coming to a second point i want you to attend to close number 25.4 in is456 it says all columns shall be designed for minimum eccentricity equal to the unsupported length of column by 500 plus lateral dimension by 30 so this is the formula that i was talking about but my emphasis is on the next line that is where biaxial bending is considered it is sufficient to ensure that eccentricity exceeds the minimum about one axis at a time so here comes in your skill to interpret this code sentence so i'll read it again where biaxial bending is considered so please note that most columns in any project is going to be biaxially bending especially since we have seismic forces so all columns are likely to be biaxially bending and it says that it is sufficient to ensure that eccentricity exceeds the minimum about one axis at a time so let me explain this to you so for explaining that i also need to explain you how we generally consider forces when you have eccentricity so assume that you have a column which has 1000 kilonewton load and a 30 mux that is your major axis moment or mu3 in terms of etaps so i'm talking about this as mux and uh, this as muy say you have these forces in your column that is 30 in the major direction and 20 in the minor direction and assume that you have a minimum eccentricity moment calculated as 60 and uh, 40 
Now, as per our textbooks and SP16, what is done is if your minimum eccentricity moment is more than your frame moment. So this is your frame moment. Whatever you get from your analysis result could be from ETABS or STAT, whichever software you are using. So if your minimum eccentricity moment is more, you are going to ignore this and you are going to take this and this and your final design moments are going to be 1000, 60 and 40. And in case if your minimum eccentricity moment was 20 and 10 then you will discard this and then take 30 and 20 in your design now in case if your moment was 40 and then 10 then you will discard this you will take this but instead of this you will take 20 and design so that's how you do when you have eccentricity moment so the nutshell is whichever is more you take that if your frame moment in that direction is more you take the frame moment if your eccentricity moment is more you take that particular value for your design now i want to bring your attention back to this case where you have both your eccentricity moment more than your frame moment so in such a situation if you look at textbooks and sp16 you will see that instead of 30 they will encourage you to take 60 and 40. now here is where i want you to read the code once more it says where biaxial bending is considered so you have biaxial bending here that's why you have two moments it is sufficient to ensure that eccentricity exceeds the minimum about one axis at a time so this means that you don't have to design for 1000 60 and 40 at the same time if you want you can do because the code says that it is sufficient to ensure that eccentricity exceeds the minimum about one axis at a time so what it means is the first case i'm going to take 1000 between 30 and 60 i'm going to take 60 and between 20 and 40 even though 40 is more i'm going to take 20 so, so this becomes my case one so code says that it is sufficient to ensure that one is considered at a time which means between 30 and 60 i took one the largest one between 20 and 40 i don't have to take 40 because one at a time 20 you can do this now as a second case you will have to do thousand this is your pu and here you are going to retain 30 and here you are going to replace 20 with 40 so this becomes your case two for eccentricity moment so code is saying that it is sufficient to ensure that eccentricity exceeds the minimum about one axis at a time so this is another clause which is never discussed never thought about never considered probably considering this makes your manual designs more complicated but at the same time in situations where you have huge amount of eccentricity moment it might be handy to economize the structure as well so i hope these two tips helps you making your designs more meaningful more accurate and more economical thank you for watching this video and if you like this video please share this please like the video and uh, share your comments and also follow our channel don't miss doing any of this and in case if you like to learn every tip that i know please join my community or consider my mentoring program the link is in the description thank you once more